Tëtashur miqë, salamu alaikum, takohemi sot në datën 26-shor të vitit 2021, sot me mua kam një personal shumë interesant që eftoj në biset nga Jeruzalemi i Palestinës së pushtuar. Personi në fjallë është gazetar, është intelektual, bitë zgjitar shqiptar dhe arnaut quhet zoti Abdul Rauf Arnauti. Tani, kjo video që unë përbëjmë me zotin Arnaut është video e tretë, që përbëjmë në qizimin, pasi flasim ku di gjonë 2-3-5 minuta, një dore që diqme futet dhe nga pret video. Shpresoj që kësaj heret mos të ambyllet Skype-i dhe ju të di gjoni deri në fundë pisetën interesante që unë do të bëjmë me zotin Arnaut. Tani, Sigur ju e dini ne në Shqiptarët, në kohën e perandoris Osmane, si një nga elementet mbrojtës të islamit në pot dhe shtetformuës të perandoris Osmane, patëm një rol shumë të rëndësishëm edhe në mbrojtjen e tokave të shenta dhe në veçantit të gjamis e aksa. Dhe si pasoj, Shqiptarët u shpërndan në të gjitha cepat e globit dhe në veçantit në zemrën e islamit. Familjet e Arnaudve, një kemi nga Egypti, Libia, deri në Siri, në Jemen, dhe gjithashtu edhe në Palestinë. Në vitin 2018, kërë unë vizitove Palestinën, dhe edhe bora një liber për apartheidin Izraelit në Palestinë, kërë isha në Jeruzalem, në Kutsal Sharif, në Gjamin e Shein, dhe u takova me she Omar Al-Kiswanin, më të thamë që këtu në Jeruzalem, ka familje Arnaudësh. U habita, doja të takoja persona, si kur zoti Abdullë Raufë Arnauti, por koha e shkurëtër nuk nga prentoj. Dhe ja, tani pas dy vitesh, Allahu, apo tre vitesh, Allahu ne ka bërë të mundur që të gjemë zotin Abdullë Raufë Arnautin dhe ta intervistojmë atë për Shqiptarët e Palestinës. Mr. Abdul Rauf Arnaud, this is our third time that we are trying to record this video together. Some strange hand is entering and closing our Skype conversation. I hope that this time they will not close the Skype for us. Sir, I made you a small introduction in Albanian. I told to our Albanian viewers in the Balkans that in this video we are going to talk about the Arnauds of Palestine and you are a very, very special guest in my show, and you are going to be viewed a lot in Kosovo, Albania, Macedonia, where our people are so uh, uh, curious to know more about you guys. Who are you, the Albanians of Palestine? Thank you. Thank you very much, you know, for having me in your show. And it's, it's a pleasure, you know, to speak about about the Albanians in Palestine uh, and the way the, the way they are now. Uh, I want to begin with talking about something. Maybe I think it is interesting because many many people don't know it, whether in Albania or in Palestine, which is the fact that the most important uh, person who came from whose of uh, of uh, Albanian origin in Palestine is Ahmad Helmi Abdel Baki. Ahmad Helmi Abdel Baki was born in uh, was born in uh, in Lebanon for a father uh, who was uh, from Tulkarem in the northern part of the West Bank. Now the the origin of this person who was an officer in the Uthman uh, army was Albanian. And uh, the most important thing about this guy is the positions that he took in Palestine, which we consider very, very important. Now, he began as uh, in charge of the Islamic Waqf in Jerusalem in 1926. And in 1930, 
he uh, participated in uh, establishing uh, the Arab Bank. Now, the Arab Bank is very imp is the most important bank considered in the Palestinian territories, and also in Jordan and in other uh, Arab countries. But also, what is important is that in, in 1948, which is the date where Israel was established, he was the Prime Minister of Palestine. And uh, this is this is this is a very very important uh, position for somebody, uh, you know, in Palestine. Now he stayed for some time, and uh, in 1963 he passed away, and he's he's one of uh, what he's he's one of uh, maybe. Uh, five to six people who are buried in Al-Aqsa Mosque. You know, that ah. if you... If so you he, visit, he's, inside, he's inside the Waqf? He's, he's inside, his, his, his tomb is inside the mosque, inside, you know, there is a place in the mosque on the, on the uh, western wall of, of Al-Waqf, of, of Al-Aqsa, and there is several people who are built there, who are buried there. He's one of them. The others are uh, the Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajj Amin Husseini, and the grandfather of the King of Jordan uh, is buried there. Other than that, nobody is allowed to be buried inside. Uh, you know, inside. Uh, the, the grandfather, uh, Hajj Amin uh, Hajj Sharif. What was his name, the, the, the name of the grandfather of the king of Jordan? Uh, Sharif Hussein? Sh Sharif, Sharif, Sharif uh, Hussein, I think. Sharif Hussein, yeah. Uh, sir, can you tell us something? Uh, what, no. happened, what happened to Mr. Ahmed Helmi when um, Israel was created in 1948? What did he do? He, he, wa he was the prime minister now. There were the, you know, the war at that time, and everything has finished, you know, at that did, time. You know. Did he fight with the Israeli occupying forces? All, all, all the Arabs were, uh, you know, fighting against Israel at that time, but Israel managed, you know, to take maybe 78% of uh, the historical Palestine as a result of that war and uh, you know the the palestinians were on the lands that we we say now it is the 67 borders which is you know the lands that israel didn't occupy in uh, 48 and which the palestinians aspire you know to establish their state on it you know about about the Arnaud family itself, it's uh, there is concentration for the family in East Jerusalem. Uh, there is uh, part of the family in Akko also, and that's in the in the northern part. And there is. Uh, uh, a few few people i think they are they came originally from egypt uh, family, but the, the the biggest one is the ones that is in east jerusalem which is which i belong to it we are around maybe between around 150 50 people uh, uh, one one uh, the uncle the uncle of my father was the imam of al aqsa for for some time and the other uh, the the nephew what, of my what, what was his name Mahmoud Arnaud. Uh, sorry Mahmoud Arnaud. so he was he, he was the imam of al sharif yeah yeah all right and okay and his his son uh, was the muaddin not not the main Muaddin, but assistant Muaddin, you know, in Al-Aqsa. All right. All right. Uh, so, can I have, sorry, can I have again the name, name of the uncle of your father, please? Uh, Mahmoud. 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 Mahmoud Arnaud. Okay, good. 
Uh, sir, I th I don't know something is happening. Your voice is coming and going. Of is there something interfering in your computer or no? And you had the light which has gone off. Okay, it's okay. Continue. No, it shows that it's now it's, it's perfect. working. We can hear you well now. Yeah, uh, tell us something more about uh, the Arnauts of uh, Jerusalem. Do they all keep the surname Arnauti, or they have yeah. even other surnames? No, no, we have, we have, we have, we have the name of Arnaut. You know, and people, people know. You know, when you say Arnaut, people, people in Palestine know that this is not originally a Palestinian family that it is it is coming from somewhere now some people think that we are turkish others they think that we are uh, you know who knows about the history they say you are albanian uh, you know i was i was doing a lot of research about uh, the family in about the family in Palestine. Now, the, the main thing is that, you know, for instance, uh, my family and, the, you know, the, the, the uncles of my, of my uh, the, the uncles of my father, they all came from uh, Jaffa. We came from, from Jaffa in uh, 1948. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are, we are refugees. We have a refugee cars as refugees from Jaffa in '48. We, we the family began living in East Jerusalem since 1948. You know, after refu after moving from Jaffa as a result of the war. Now, uh, uh, the 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 thinking is that you know that Arnaud came to Jaffa uh, and Palestine. Uh, during the period of Ibrahim Basha, who's the son of uh, Muhammad Ali, who ruled uh, Egypt and uh, other Arab countries, including Palestine, in the period between and the period until eight, 1840. Now, uh, uh, Palestine was pa Palestine was under the rule of, of, uh, of Muhammad Ali and his son in the period like 1832 to 18 to 1840 and when when we ask about the origin of this name that's Arnaud they say Arnaud is the army of Muhammad Ali and his son uh, Ibrahim Basha you know they were all called Arnaud because they came from Albania and they, you know, they say this. So, so some some of the of the family of 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 this of this army had stayed in the countries, including Egypt, uh, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and the others. Maybe they decided they decided to return back to 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 Albania. Uh, we we tried many times, you know, to to like find uh, the roots, the roots of of uh, of who you know of the family in Albania. It is it is very difficult, you know. You know, once once I, we were as Palestinian journalists, we were meeting with the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, he was the prime minister at that time, and everybody was introducing his name, saying his name, where he worked for. And when I said my name, he said, Arnaud, do you, where are you staying? And I said, we stay in Jerusalem, in Palestine. And he said, he asked me, do you know how your family came to Palestine? I said, we came with Muhammad Ali, with the Arab, you know, that's the army of Muhammad Ali and his son. And they said, uh, no, you, your family came uh, originally, it was from Albania to Turkey and from Turkey to Palestine. And this this is the way, the way you had, your family had moved, you know, in this, uh, you know, to, to Palestine. So it is still, uh, you know, it's still, 
very difficult to you know to know exactly how it was how the how how the family had, had come is there uh, like a family in in Albania or not we we don't know I tried so they said that maybe it would be Të dashur mishë, selam alikum, si kur shpjegu pa më herot, videot e mija me Zotin Arnaut që unë bëj me Skype që ditërisht nga pritën, me gjitha të ne do vazhdojmë bisetën shumë interesante me Zotin Abdel Rauf Arnaut, bi historin e Arnautve në Palestin. Mr. Abdel Rauf, sorry, something is happening to Skype, we're having our videos interrupted, but I want to continue the discussion with you, and I'm going to put uh, our, our conversation in parts for as long as uh, Skype allows us. So you're telling to us uh, about the discussion that you had uh, with the then Prime Minister Erdogan, who mentioned about your origin as Arnauts. Now, uh, uh, in, you mentioned to us before that in Jerusalem there are around 150 Arnauts, uh, what is your opinion? How many Arnauts are in all Palestine? I mean, Israel and uh, occupied territories, West Bank and Gaza. What is your estimate? I think the total number would be around 200. So around 200 Arnauts. Uh, do they have, uh, uh, do they know that they're Albanians? For the fact, you know, when you when you say when you say Arnaut, even if you Google it, mm -hmm. it says Albanian. So uh, now we know uh, you know, the, the 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 origin the origin is known, but it's you know the connection is difficult. That you don't know. Uh, you know, I tell you, for instance, in 2016. Uh, I decided to, with the family, to visit Kosovo. Now, because because we in Jerusalem we have the Jordanian passports, we don't need uh, a visa to to visit uh, Kosovo. It's uh, this is the agreement between the Jordanian government and uh, and uh, and the Kosovo government. So uh, we went. To Turkey and from Turkey we 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 go to uh, to to Kosovo. But before before traveling before traveling to Kosovo, uh, now Albania is very close, and I was thinking now maybe there is a possibility to visit to visit Kosovo also to to visit Albania also. So I looked into the the website of the foreign ministry of Albania. And it says that you need that uh, we need a visa to visit to visit Albania. So uh, I looked into uh, if there is uh, uh, if there is a way to get them the visa at that time from Jordan. And you know it was said that no, you have to go to Egypt to get to get the visa. Otherwise, you need Schengen. And we, I didn't have a Schengen, and the family didn't have a Schengen. But I was looking, I was looking into the details of of the, you know, the ways to enter. And in one point, it says that if you have uh, an American visa in which you visited the United States, then you can enter, then you can enter Albania. So I said, this is this is good. And also, I found that uh, Montenegro had the same, you know, that if you have the American uh, visa, then you can enter. So, uh, I printed I printed it, the, that's this page of the Albania foreign, uh, foreign Ministry, and I made the arrangements to travel from uh, Kosovo to Albania, from Albania to Montenegro. And we did it like this. We we were in Kosovo for for a few days. Then we moved in a car 
from Kosovo to Albania. At the borders, they said, where is the visa? I said, uh, here's the visa, and it's American visa. So they said, this is, this is American visa. We need European visa or Albanian visa. So I showed, I, I was printing, you know, this, this page from the Albanian foreign ministry, and I showed it to him. And he looked at it, he said, strange, but let me check. So he went to his supervisor, they checked, they said, okay, you can enter, you know, with this, with this visa. And then uh, we, we were in, Tir uh, in Tirana, and then we moved, you know, to the north, to Montenegro, and from Montenegro we returned back to the to to Turkey and then to the to to the Palestinian to the Palestinian territories you know that's to Palestine. Uh, now in, when I was in Albania, you know they they said the 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 receptionist at the hotel she said she looked at the passport it is Jordanian and it is Arnaud. So she said uh, you are you are from here but you have uh, Jordanian passport. I said, uh, also I'm from Palestine. And she she was confused. She said, Stein, Arnau having Jordanian passport. What is this? So she said, okay. You know, she laughed and she said, okay. Uh, also, you know, if. Uh, if you come to Palestine, for instance, and you ask about families, for instance, if you say Arnaut, it is known that there is Arnaut in Jerusalem. If you say, for instance, Husseini, it is in Jerusalem. If you say, you know, there is many families that you can know that it is in Jerusalem or in Ramallah or in Gaza or in uh, Hebron or in Jaffa or in Haifa, you know. So I said maybe, maybe, while in, in Tirana, I said maybe, may, maybe I can find something, you know, to to know uh, something about the family. So I was in the taxi, and I said I asked the taxi driver, uh, "I'm," I said, "I'm Arnaud, and I don't know if there is, you know, like." A non family here, you know, Arnaud. And he laughed. He said, Look, we are all Arnaud, you know, what, is, what are you looking for? So, you know, at that time, I thought that it would be, you know, very, very difficult, you know, more, you know, to know exactly if there is, you know, a direct family connection in Albania. Some people told me that. I can maybe I can try to the Turkish archive, uh, but you know it needs to go back maybe like 100 years with the family tree in order to reach a name or get number or something in order to begin from there searching about about the rules. So until now, it's it's very very difficult, you know, to know exactly. Uh, the exact rules. We know that the origin of the family is from Albania, but we don't know if there is direct family connection uh, people that we can reach there. You know, you're talking about long time, maybe maybe one more than one hundred years. So it's. it's Very interesting. Uh, Mr. Arnaud, if you can explain us something. Uh, you live in uh, Jerusalem. <clears throat> you identify as Palestinian, but you have Jordanian passport. Why? Because, because when, Israel, when Israel occupied uh, the, the rest of Palestine, which is the 67 borders, including the, we're talking about East Jerusalem, West Bank, and Gaza Strip. Uh, they they took it, they occupied it from the Jordanians, and for for a long time, uh, we in the in, in East Jerusalem and in the West Bank. We were we were considered Palestinians, but under the under the the administrative uh, 
connection with the Jordanians. Now, uh, in in the in the late eighties, uh, you know this this thing had stopped for the West Bank, but it continued working for for East Jerusalem. Uh, uh, and when the Palestinian Authority was established in 1994, the West Bankers and the, Ga the Gazans, they had the Palestinian passport, but the Oslo Agreement said that Palestinians in Jerusalem cannot have the, the Palestinian passport because Jerusalem is an issue to be solved in the final negotiations between between the Palestinian between the Palestinians and the, the, the Israelis at that time you know the thinking that was that the the agreement the final agreement would be in five years after signing Oslo which is something like uh, 1999 but uh, it's ongoing until now so uh, we have we have a Palestinian, we have the Jordanian passport, we can't have uh, the Palestinian passport, and we have what is called a travel document. Travel document is uh, issued by the Israeli Foreign Ministry, uh, by the Israeli Interior Ministry. Uh, it allows us to travel through Ben Gurion Airport. So, hello, Mr. Abdurrahman Farnout. Uh, we cut again on Skype. This is our third part of the conversation. So, as you were telling to us, is uh, that you keep a, a Jordanian passport, but you have an Israeli travel document. Am I right? Or a Palestinian travel document? What no, we have we have the Jordanian passport. We can't have. Uh, a Palestinian passport. We have an, uh, an Israeli travel document. It is okay. issued by the Israeli Interior Ministry in order to travel through the Ben Gurion Airport. All right. Now, uh, are, you are you are you resident of Israel? No, we are. We are Palestinians. We are. We are in East Jerusalem, which we consider as uh, the capital of Palestine. Yes, I'm not, but you, you, do, you don't have a residency document in Jerusalem. No, we don't. We we can, according to the Israeli law, take Israeli citizenship. But the vast majority of the Palestinians in East Jerusalem, we are like uh, uh, three hundred forty thousand, three hundred fifty thousand. Uh, the majority we don't take the Israeli citizenship. Why uh, don't maybe you take, e, e, by taking Israeli citizenship you can vote, and by voting <clears throat> you can oust the extremist governments of Israel who harm you. Why don't you do that? We if the the thinking is that if you take the Israeli passport while living in East Jerusalem, then you accept. The Israeli occupation of East Jerusalem. Now, but we we consider that we don't we don't accept the Israeli occupation of East Jerusalem. We say that this is the capital of the Palestinian state, uh, and we are here until the you know the occupation ends. If I take the Israeli, if I take the Israeli passport, then I'm accepting you know the Israeli rule in East Jerusalem. I don't accept it. You know, that, that's the vast majority of the Palestinians in East Jerusalem who don't accept the Israeli rule over. You know, it's, it rules as, as occupation, not rules as, you know, something we accept. Right. Does Israel discriminate you? No. It's, we, we are... We we are part of the we are part of the Palestinian society. You no, know, uh, uh, if you ask me, you know, what is your citizenship? I say Palestinian. Uh, now, as Palestinian living in East Jerusalem, uh, you know, there is many many problems that Palestinians are facing in East Jerusalem. You know, there is the issue of, uh, uh, for instance, for instance. 
if you if you live if you live outside East Jerusalem for a period of time, you lose your residency in East Jerusalem, and they consider that you left the city, so you don't you don't uh, you no longer have the possibility of living in East Jerusalem. Uh, there is the issue of you know the uh, you know, what you know what applies what applies to to other Palestinians in Israel affects us you know what's happening now in Sheikh Jarrah that the way that they want to evacuate and expel Palestinians from their houses in Sheikh Jarrah or in Silwan or in uh, other places in Jerusalem, it's, you know, it's for sure, you know, it, it, it affects us, you know. We, 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 are, we are part of the society. We don't say that we are, you know, something different, you know. We are, we are, we are Palestinians, you know, at, at, the, at the end of the day. It's true that, you know, the origin is from, uh, from Albania, but... Uh, you know, the problems that the Palestinians have in East Jerusalem, it affects us all, you know, as, as, people, as people of the city. Are uh, the Arnauts, uh, have they ever been victimized by these uh, Israeli eviction policies like you have uh, now in Sheikh Jarrah, uh, Palestinians being expelled from their properties? No, there is there is uh, members. Uh, at least now there is one member of the family who's arrested by by the Israelis. Uh, there is uh, part of the family. They have they have a house and a shop in the old city in East Jerusalem, and settlers were trying to get the shop from them so they went to the court and they proved that this that this uh, that this shop is owned by them and they managed to evict them you know from from this uh, from this shop, shop so they you know, but, uh, from, from this albanian family you know there is from time to time arrests here and there you know but uh, uh, you know, thanks God, there is no eviction of uh, what houses. Does, you but know, what justification of, uh, do the settlers use, like against this family that you mentioned? Okay, Mr. <laughs> Abdul Rauf, we're continuing with our. Uh, fourth part, uh, our, our Skype is, is closing. Now uh, we're using other devices. We hope not to close. So uh, you're telling to us about uh, the cases of uh, discrimination by settlers of, uh, the, against the Arnauts in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. You mentioned that one Arnaut was uh, arrested. Why was he arrested by Israeli authorities? Because because of the you know there were uh, recent you know problems in East Jerusalem since the beginning since uh, the beginning of Ramadan related to the issues of, of Al Aqsa Mosque to Sheikh Jarrah to Damascus Gate and the old city so he he was arrested uh, by the claims that he was part of this protest you know by palestinians in east jerusalem against these acts by uh, by the israelis you know in jerusalem so he was taken to prison interrogation and then uh, he was uh, he was uh, kept in. Uh, he was. It was decided that he'll stay in prison for four months. Four months. Yeah. For taking part in a protest. Yes. Uh, now uh, we have an Albanian embassy in uh, in, uh, in Tel Aviv, and recently we had. Uh, is it good? Yes, uh, and recently we have even uh, uh, the embassy of Kosovo in uh, 
in Jerusalem. Do they ever contact with you? Do they ever uh, care about the Albanians of uh, Israel? Mm. We, 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 we are not in Israel, you know, just to... In Occupy in, Jerusalem. Yeah, we, we, we are in the Occupy this Jerusalem and uh, uh, they, 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 ne they were never in connect, you know, in connection with us, you know, to try, you know, it is, it is known that there is uh, Arnauts, you know, in East Jerusalem, but they never tried to, to connect and ask, you know, for instance, about us, about the origins, about, you know, the, the, no, no, but, you know, for instance, you know, just to make a comparison, uh, there is the Turkish uh, uh, consulate in East Jerusalem, and there is the Turkish uh, embassy in Tel Aviv. And they try, you know, from my work as a journalist, I know that they try all the time to search for those who are from Turkish origin, who live in East Jerusalem, in Palestine in general and they get into connection with them to to know them to know their situation to try to connect them with the, their families in, in turkey uh, there were there were once uh, uh, like three three years ago there were there were a big meeting that took place in in Ankara, it was it was organized by Pika and the office of the prime minister, uh, the office of the president, uh, to speak about Jerusalem, to speak about Jerusalem, and to speak about you know the the people who are from Turkish origin who live in, in Jerusalem. Uh, but you know, unfortunately, there is no such thing, you know, from the from uh, the, there is no uh, there is no consulate for Albania in Jerusalem. But there is the embassy in Tel Aviv, but they they were never they never had a connection with us. You know, it's it's easy because we live in East Jerusalem. It's easy for them to connect with us. It's easy for them, you know, to ask to call us and say, come. Uh, we want to hear more about your family, about uh, things, but they, they, they were never in, uh, in connection, in, in connection with us uh, to try to to know. Now, nobody is, nobody from us is saying that that. The, you know, we need something, you know, but at least, you know, to make the connection to, to see, or to, to see, maybe, maybe, maybe they can help, you know, with the issue of the connection with the families, you know, that if there is families, you know, in Albania, you know. I know that from all the family that lives in East Jerusalem, I am the only one who visited Albania. You know. All the others, they, they didn't have the opportunity to visit. They wish they wish to visit and to see to see Albania, but they don't have the possibility. They need, they need, you need, you know, either the Albanian visa, which you only can get from Egypt, or you need the Schengen. And most mostly, you know, you need, you get in East Jerusalem. You get. Uh, sorry, sorry. One second, Mr. Abdulrauf. Uh, First of all, can you uh, stay a bit on the right of the... Yeah, that's it. Number two is... No, uh, you have to go further on your right. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And to look towards your phone. Uh, now, uh, you, are, you are saying that uh, you need to go to Egypt for getting visa? Can you yes. get the visa from Tel Aviv? Yes. No, I can't get the visa from Tel Aviv because, the, you know, uh, there is agreement of free visa between Israel and Albania. Now, Israelis, the Israelis who have, you know, who have the Israeli passport, they don't need a visa. They just travel to Albania and that's it. But for me, in order to travel to Albania, I need to get, I need to get a visa. And because, because I have the Jordanian passport, I need to go to, to Egypt to get, to get the visa. But 
Why to Egypt and not to Tel Aviv, to the Albanian embassy in Tel Aviv? Because because it is a, it is the Jordanian passport. So the the Tel Aviv embassy does not cover you. No. no. All right. Uh, now, sir. Uh, no. If, if 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 you go if you go to the if you go to the to the uh, to the to the website of the foreign ministry of uh, of Albania, and you say I need I need a visa. So you put the they you know they ask a question. For instance, uh, what passport you have? You say Jordanian passport. It says Egypt. Right. Uh, recently, the government of Kosovo opened its embassy in Jerusalem. I have uh, written one article in English about this. And I show how the government of Benjamin Netanyahu blackmailed the Kosovars through uh, the evangelical administration of uh, Donald Trump. In particular, it was the role of Richard Grinnell, uh, who blackmailed the government of Albin Kurti to sign a normalization agreement with Serbia. And among others, they wanted the Kosovo to send embassy in Jerusalem. The government of Albin Kurti resisted, didn't accept this in, uh, and in, in 2020, in April. And as a result, the Americans made a coup in Pristina. They pushed Abdullah Hoti of the Democratic League of Kosovo to uh, send uh, Alpin Kurti and the Vizia Ved uh, Bendosia, which is movement for self-determination out of power. And they brought a government uh, uh, headed by the Democratic League of Kosovo. This government, which was uh, illegal, uh, uh, sent the, uh, I mean, uh, signed the normalization agreement with Serbia and uh, decided uh, to send uh, the embassy of Kosovo in Jerusalem. Now, uh, when uh, we had elections in Kosovo in uh, January 2020, the uh, Albin Kurti, the movement for self-determination, won the elections. And when they won the elections, Benjamin Netanyahu called on Kosovo to send the embassy in Jerusalem. Albin Kurti said, uh, we will see if, if we send it in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem. But what happened? Americans blackmailed the Kurti government. And uh, what happened is uh, that before Albin Kurti was to come to power, uh, there was a kind of coup, in a, a diplomatic coup in Pristina made by Benjamin Netanyahu with the previous government of uh, Abdullah Hoti, and they forced Kosovo to have its uh, embassy in Jerusalem. Now, you as uh, Arnauts, as Albanians of Jerusalem, how did you feel by this action that uh, the government of uh, Kosovo took by sending its embassy in Jerusalem? It is, it is, you know, it is bad, you know, to have, you know, like, you know, Many many countries have relations have relations with Israel, and they have their embassies in Tel Aviv. Now, when when you decide to open an embassy in Jerusalem, it's a message that you accept the Israeli claim that Israel is the one who rules. You know, is that Jerusalem entitled Jerusalem? That's all of Jerusalem, east and west are part of Israel, which is something that we don't like. You know, we say that, OK, West Jerusalem could be the capital of, of Israel, but East Jerusalem should be the capital of Palestine. And this is this is the position that is adopted by the almost entire uh, international community, including the European Union, that you know that they say you know the European Union they had the position and they said they they didn't like the fact that uh, that Kosovo decided to to open its embassy in Jerusalem. They said okay, you can open it in Tel Aviv, just like the others, just like uh, France, Italy, Spain, uh, UK, you know all all the. All the country, you know, the only the only countries that that uh, had an embassy in Jerusalem was 
the United States, uh, Nicaragua, and uh, and Kosovo. That's three countries. While as all the other countries, they have their embassies, you know, in Tel Aviv. But now, why why Kosovo decided that the minute that they they got this recognition from from Israel, which Israel, you know, for a long time decided not not to recognize uh, Kosovo because because of their relations with Serbia and also because they didn't they they hated you know the idea of uh, people having uh, uh, like their the you know their own independence in their state because they thought that if they recognize the independence of Kosovo then this would be a, a precedent for the Palestinians to ask for their independence from the Israeli occupation. So what, what Kosovo did is that they decided that they wanted to open, you know, the embassy, the embassy in in Jerusalem, which is which is bad. And the Palestinians were clearly that they are they are against against this step that uh, you want you want to establish relations with the Israelis. Okay, you can do whatever you want. You know, many countries have relations with Israel. Uh, but on the same time, you should, you know, you should avoid, you know, having your your embassy in Jerusalem because because it, you know, it harms the Palestinian demands of having a, a capital in uh, in East Jerusalem. You know, that. Right, uh, Mr. Arnaud. <clears throat> Uh, we recently had the war in Gaza, and uh, the government of uh, Kosovo supported uh, Israel because they are afraid of Americans, of course. And they said Israel has the right to defend itself. Uh, you, as an Arnaut, what would you tell to the government of Kosovo and Albania? when a conflict happens between Palestine and Israel. Because what we have here, because of the American hegemony, uh, is all this uh, propaganda, especially sponsored even by evangelical uh, Protestant circles. They portray uh, Israel as God's uh, chosen people, and they have the right to do anything against you. So what, what, what would be your advice to, to, I mean, us in the Balkans? And number two, please, sir, if you can go a bit on the right. Yeah, I want you just there. Uh, uh, yeah, because the, after that, uh, the Skype cuts the image and then I lose you. So what is your appeal to us uh, as uh, Albanians in the Balkans? What should we do for you as a Palestinian and as an Arnold, after all? No, you know, now, now the, the, word, the word had changed. Now... Donald Trump is no longer in the White House and no longer have authority. You have a change. There is a new American administration. This administration is saying clearly that they are with the two-state solution. They speak about the, the right of the Palestinians to live in dignity. They say that they want to reopen the American consulate in East Jerusalem, which was closed by Donald Trump. So the the uh, and they 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 are asking the the, the international uh, community to help both Palestinians uh, and Israelis. Now, the the connection the connection between Israel and the United States is something you know. Uh, extraordinary, but it doesn't mean that that uh, you have to accept the entire Israeli demands in order to be to be pro-American. There is, in the, you know, there is in the Congress uh, <laughs> members who are against the war in Gaza. Uh, Bernie Sanders and others are asking to connect the Israel, the, the, the help of Israel to stopping occupation. So, so, you know, I think what is needed, what is needed 
from the countries, not just Kosovo, but every, all the countries, is, is to be, uh, you know, with the Palestinian demand to have a Palestinian state on the borders of 67, uh, of 67 and with East Jerusalem as the capital, you know, it's, it's a right and it is something, you know, for those countries to be proud of that they, that, uh, you know, for instance, Kosovo itself, you know, it's, it, it had it, it independence and it should be, it should be a country that knows more than others. What does it mean, you know, independence for people, for people. So we, we expect that, you know, the Kosovo country, the Kosovo people, is to, to, to feel us more than the others because you know they they fought for the they wanted their independence they fought for their independence and they got their independence so why not you know ask why not helping others who need independence you know it's uh, it is it is something you know we, you you you're talking about not something outside the international law we are, you're talking about something in accordance to the international law that is the right of the palestinians to have their own state on 67 borders with each of the as a capital you, 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 that's you are not you're not supporting something uh, extraordinary something that is not uh, accepted by the international community it is the consensus of the international community and you should be with the consensus of the international community you should not be you know thinking about people you know like trump and others they are uh, outdated you know they they are out, outside you know netanyahu is outside you know he's no longer the mr prime Arnauto, by the way uh, netanyahu is out and many people around the world are happy are you arnold's happy that Arna uh, that netanyahu lost power no look he he lost power but still the the right wing is the majority inside the Knesset. Now there is there is a change in the Israeli government. Nobody is building a lot of hope on this change because the Prime Minister of Israel, the new one, is is a right wing. You know, the right wing they have they have big power uh, inside inside the Israeli government. Having we don't we, we don't build, you know, hopes that this government, this new government, would accept what the Palestinians want, which is a state with issues and um, as a capital. We know that this government will not accept it. You know, that at the end, you know, but in order in order to make this possible, to pressure the Israeli government, you know, to accept. Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as the capital. You need, you need the support and uh, of the international community of all the countries, you know, in the world to tell Israel, look, it's over. You know that, the, that in order to bring stability, peace to this area, you need to accept the fact that those Palestinians should have their state, you know, that they should have. Uh, the 67 borders with each other as the Mexican capital state. But, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it won't be realistic to think that this government, this new government would accept, you know, it's, you know, you need, you need big change inside Israel in order to make this possible. Mr. Arnaut, during my visit in, in Palestine, I went to Nablus, to Jericho, to Ramallah, etc. I understood that uh, Israel has destroyed the two-state option, two-state solution, how Americans call it, for the future of Palestine and Israel. They have sent their colonies deep into West Bank. So, I mean, you were going to Nablus, but there was no Nablus anymore because Nablus was surrounded by Jewish colonies. You were going to Jericho, there was no Jericho anymore. It was surrounded by Jewish colonies. You were going to El Khalil or Hebron, there was no Hebron because Jewish colonies, they had occupied the heart of the city. 
Now, uh, what has happened is, uh, at least for us as outside observers, is that the two-state solution is very difficult. Why? Because you have hundreds and thousands of colonies who are in the West Bank, and these people, they're not going to leave. I mean, only if, if, if a supreme power, a superpower forces Israel to do that. So for, for us as people who see the situation from outside, me, myself, I think that the only option that you have in Israel and Palestine is uh, to uh, become Israeli citizens and through vote to change the regime in Tel Aviv. Because there is no other option. I mean, uh, Jordan, <laughs> Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Syria are not going to liberate Israel. We know that. are not going to liberate Palestine. For as long as the Anglo-American empire is there, they're going to kill the Arabs and they will not allow uh, uh, the creation of a, a Palestinian state. So, uh, at least for us who are outside of uh, Palestine, uh, we, th we see that, and this is something that drives the Americans crazy, is that, okay, Israel destroyed Palestine, they occupied everything, they didn't leave any land for a future Palestinian state. Then what we from outside say, okay, let's have democracy. Because, I mean, what is happening now in uh, Israel and Palestine is that there is an apartheid regime. You, as an Arnaut, only because you are a Muslim, you have not the rights that Jewish colonists who are Albanians of Jewish faith, who through the Aliyah system, can at any moment come to Israel, get a citizenship, get a house, a job, change their names, become Israelis. People who are not Israelis. People who are Poles, who are Ukrainians, who are Russians, who are Albanians, but only because they follow the Jewish faith. But you, who are, we say, Den Babadan, you are since many generations in Palestine, you have no rights. So sometimes I think that probably the best solution for toppling the apartheid and the fascist state of Israel is to have all the Palestinians the right to vote. Sometimes when I debate uh, with uh, Israelis on the internet and they complain, they say, oh, look, these Palestinians, Hamas is throwing us rockets. I tell them, okay, allow them to throw votes in the ballot box. Because, I mean, uh, Israel, and especially with what Netanyahu did by wanting to make Israel a Jewish state, has destroyed totally the historical Palestine. They have taken all their lands. They, they, they sent Palestinians in the mountains of Ramallah and of, of the West Bank or, or in Gaza. So they are not going to let you go back to your lands. So what do you think about the solution of all you guys becoming Israeli citizens, participating in a democracy, and since you are the majority, because uh, uh, I mean, in my analysis that I make about Israel, I show Israel as a failed state. I mean, this state is being kept by money that uh, U.S. empire is giving to them. They're taking every day $10 million. When I was in Israel, I, I was shocked. It was a horrible country. I went to Tel Aviv, I went to Ben Gurion, I went to Jerusalem, and people, even when they were in coffees, they were keeping guns in, 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 in their pockets or in, in, in their tables. And you see everywhere soldiers. This is a military garrison. It's not a state. I mean, if they don't receive money from America, they're going to collapse in, in probably six months. But now the question is this. Uh, you as Palestinians, you do not have a nuclear weapon. Israel has. You don't have America. Um, uh, Israel has. You don't have uh, rockets. Israel has. But you have the spirit. So my proposal or question to you is, what if you all tell to Israelis, okay, you invaded us, you defeated us. Let us vote now and go to the ballot box. Because believe me, this is the nightmare of the Jewish state. Because their problem is that they do not want to accept a multicultural democratic society. What, what do you think about that? No, 
no about 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 your question why why we don't take uh, the Israeli citizenship why don't they take the Palestinian citizenship uh, I you know I think there is one of two options either the two state solution or the one state solution yes the two state solution it's still it's difficult, as you said, but it's still possible. It needs modification of borders, some, you know, some ideas here and there. But, uh, you know, this would solve the issue of of uh, of the Palestinian state, but don't solve the issue of the refugees, because refugees also had the right. You need to find the right. You need to find the solution for the issue of refugees. And this needs needs a lot of work that the Israelis are not ready for. The other, the other option is the one state solution. You said that, you said that the Palestinians, that Israel had the atomic bomb uh, or atomic weapons, but Palestinians don't have. But in Israel, they say that this is, this is the atomic bomb of the Palestinians. And why, why they say it? Because if you look now uh, into the area between the sea and the river, which is the historical Palestine. And look at people, people who are inside, inside this, this area between the, the, the river and the sea. The Palestinians are more than the Jews. So one, one, one of the ideas that many, many, many Palestinians are saying, and this is this is originally originally a Palestinian idea is that why won't both of us live on the same land? Democratic. Each one have his own vote. We vote for a parliament that would that would have uh, the residents of this area that you know can be called whatever, but you know Jews and Palestinians, and when I say Palestinians, it's Christians and uh, and Muslims uh, in the same parliament. And this parliament would decide its own government. And this govern this uh, this parliament would also decide on the president of the state. Now, Israel Israel is not accepting this is not is not accepting this position. It is you know. Many Palestinians, they say, okay, why not? Why not having a Palestinian, uh, not Palestinian, why not having one state in which yes. all of us can live together? If, if a Jew want to live in Nablus, can live in Nablus. But also if a Palestinian who is a refugee want to return back to, to Jaffa or to Haifa or to whatever, can, can, can return back and live, then you have a solution for all the parties, you know, that's all, all you know, all, all the Palestinians and the Israelis can live in this piece of land. It's, it's easy, you know, to, to live in. But this is something that Israel don't agree for. And when, for instance, you hear some Americans, you know, for instance, during the Obama administration, uh, the, for, the, the the foreign minister of the United States at that time, John Kerry, had said that if Israel don't accept the two-state solution, then things would slip into one-state solution. And so Israel should, should hurry up to accept the two-state solution to avoid the two-state solution, the, the one-state solution. Because, because a one-state solution means the end of Israel, and Americans know it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, but, but if, you know, time is very important. If Israel don't accept a two-state solution now, then now we are half and half. You know, half Palestinian, half uh, Jews, because we can't say Israelis because there is Arab Israelis. Now, uh, how the situation would look like after five years, after 10 years, the Palestinians would be more. And each year, each year, each year, would be more and more. Then 
the internet already already with this social media people and around the world see what's happening in Gaza what's happening in Jerusalem things that they used not to see in the media they see it now it's it's easy with the with the social with the social media networks and that's why you see more and more people around the world supporting the Palestinians they say why you know why those people don't have a state you know before that it was the media who decides what this what the people should get here now it's free everybody if you are you if you are living in the united states in brazil in uk in france wherever it's very easy to google you know palestine and you know the the issue of palestine uh, you can see you know on facebook and twitter on instagram and those you know videos about what's happening in the, in the in the in the palestinian territories you don't need it's no longer you have to to wait the news bulletin and a tv to see it you can see it anywhere so let's say you know in five if now now the support of the palestinians and the international community between normal people is getting more and more it's it's the case in the United States and Europe and many many places around the world. And you know, those I, those voices would be bigger and bigger with the years. You know that they would they would not accept apartheid state. They would say, okay, you have two people on this land. They are ready to get, to live together. We don't accept the idea that one one party should rule the other party. They can live together. If they can live together, then why not living together? Let's let them have a state. And if the United States, Europe is calling for democracy, then democracy means that you go vote with your vote, you know, to decide who will represent you in the in the in the parliament. It's not somebody who decides on your behalf who would represent you in the in the parliament. So then, I th I think that Israel would find itself in a very very big problem. You know, in the coming in the coming years, that is, you know, people would not accept what governments accept. They would say, okay. May, if, if we believe in democracy, then there is a need for to have a democracy here. That those people, if they want to live together, then they should live together. Have one parliament, one, one, uh, one government, whatever. But if Israel don't want, then Israel should give them a state. Why not giving them a state? And this is, this is, this is, you know, the ideas that is that you see more and more now. You know, in the last. You know, for instance, the issue of Sheikh Jarrah, you know, it's the houses in Sheikh Jarrah, it's getting support from everywhere in the world. You know, people are saying, what is, what is this, what is this thing that people who were living in their houses since 1956, <laughs> and you, you come and say that they should leave their houses, you know, it, it, it happens nowhere in the world. Mr. Abdurraouf, I'm sorry because I'm taking so much time with you. Uh, uh, I have only two last questions. Uh, number one is, uh, we know that Israeli society is not a, a unified society. Uh, majority of these people who rule today Israel, uh, they are not, uh, according to uh, uh, Jewish authors like Shlomo Sand and others, uh, majority are Ashkenazim. These people are, are, are Slavs. Judaized Slavs, people who came from Russia, Ukraine, Poland. Netanyahu is a Polish, uh, uh, Bennett is a Polish, Ariel Sharon was a Belarusian, uh, Shimon Peres was a Polish, and what have you. And we know the process of Judaization. When these people came to Israel, they changed their names, they give Jewish names, they come and learn Hebrew because they spoke different language. So, I mean, uh, for me as a historian and, uh, and uh, a political scientist, I mean, uh, the so-called Israelis, they are an invented nation. Uh, now, I have this question, 
because uh, we know that in Israel we have the Ashkenazi, who are the majority, and then we have the Sephardim and the Arab Jews and Iranian Jews, and uh, we have the Falasha Jews of Africa. Is there a rift and a tension within these two groups? Because we, you have this group of the white, Slavic, Ashkenazi Jews who rule, and then you have these uh, black Jews, African Jews, Arab Jews, who we from outside see that they are not in position of power. Do you think that there is a, a, a division between the Ashkenazis and... No, there is, there is nothing, you know, that you can feel. That it's, you know... Within is, the Jewish society, they, they don't question sometimes and they don't say, why should these Poles and Ukrainians have it's, power? It's, but it's, it's, it's not their phenomena in Israel. You know, you see some people sometimes, you know, complaining, saying those are like this and like this, but at the end, at the, you know, at the end, uh, the, the difference is you see it between the different parties. That is, you know, do you have right, center, few left? The right is, you know, those people who don't believe, don't accept any kind of a Palestinian state. And they say that all the land uh, is, uh, is Israel. The center is people who say, okay, Palestinians have the right to have like a self-rule, maybe a state, minus state, you know, not not complete state. And the the left, you know, they are they are few in the Israeli society. They say that Palestinians have the right of state. But you don't see the differences that that you know of of people from different origins who are from Europe, who are from the East, who are from uh, Ethiopia, all these things. You know, sometimes you see problems that the Ethiopians, they say, for instance, that they have a problem of uh, discrimination or no rights, but it's, it's not something that they keep talking about it, you know, that it comes, goes down, then now there is a representative for them in the Israeli government, and it was in the previous government. So they're no longer uh, talking about about uh, about this issue. So it's not something that you know. Sometimes you know people talk about it as if you know that there is inside problems inside Israel that would like have an impact on Israel because of this issue. I, you know, I at least personally, I don't see it happening. You know, now. It's, it's, not, it's, yeah. it's more, more, more differences about, uh, you know, some, sometimes there is the problem of the Haredim that, you know, that they don't want to serve in the army. Some people are saying they should serve in the army, you know. Uh, they try to find a solution for it, but it's 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 you know uh, you know it may maybe 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 if there is a solution with the Palestinian, you might see such thing. You know that Israel would be in its own state, then maybe there would be discussions between the Israelis themselves about the kind of state that they they are in after giving the Palestinians their own state. But but for the time being, you see, as I told you, you see sometimes problems of Ethiopians, you see sometimes problems of, of Haredim who don't want to serve in the army, but, but nothing, nothing, nothing serious. You know. All right. Uh, Mr. Arnaud, uh, I'd like to thank you very, very much for coming in my show. We had uh, horrible uh, technical problems, but uh, I think it was not uh, Mossad, but your computer who was causing the problems. Yes. Now, uh, uh, what would be your final uh, 
say to the Albanians who are watching us throughout the world? I'm gonna I'm gonna have you again in my shows, inshallah, and uh, I hope uh, that you can even introduce us to more Arnauts, because I mean you are a discovery for us. I mean our embassies they are afraid of the Israeli government. They go and kiss their hands. They do whatever Americans tell them. But we as people to people, we should stay connected. Because after all, we are Albanians. I mean, we are Arnauts. We share the same uh, uh, history and, and culture. So, what what would be your 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 final message to our viewers in the Balkans? And that you have you have brothers here in Palestine, and especially in Jerusalem, a lot of the families living in the old city near Al Aqsa Mosque. Uh, we still have. We still have the the name of uh, big people. We're still proud of it, and uh, we feel uh, neglected for a long time. Nobody's thinking about us. Nobody's thinking about connecting with us. Uh, and maybe maybe it's time to. To correct, to correct this mistake, you know that, uh, you know, to feel, to feel like, to feel like other, uh, other people from other origins, whom, you know, their, you know, the governments of the places that they belong to, ask about them, think about them, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a good thing, you know, it. You know, it would be, you know, when you see, for instance, in Jerusalem, that that there is uh, countries that still have, uh, like like Morocco, for instance, they have they have some places in East Jerusalem. It says that it's connected to Morocco, Turkey, uh, other countries, France, Italy, Spain. You know, all these countries they have. They, they have places, but here, you know, for Albania, you have people, which is more important than a place. But, you know, we, we hope that, you know, that it's, you know, I personally believe it was, it was a mistake not, not to connect with us. And I hope that, you know, this mistake would be solved. You know, that, you know, in, inshallah, we will connect as people to people. And uh, by the way, we have uh, many Albanians who are following the order of uh, our Sheikh Omar Kiswani, who told me, come and do your Hajj here, yeah. who are coming and they're doing Hajj in uh, Quds al Sharif. So, um, inshallah. I don't know I, when you, sorry, come, you have brothers here, you know. Th that is why, th th that is the point. Please, uh, you have to tell me where to find you. And uh, inshallah, I'm going to tell to all uh, my Albanian uh, friends in Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia. So when they come to do Hajj in Quds al Sharif, you should uh, show us a, a konak, a cafe hane, a chai hane, or a, I don't know what term you use. I'm using our Balkanic Ottoman terms. You should have probably you 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 might have any 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 caravanserai or like the Ottomans had, or maybe any any fundak, any hotel that some Arnauts can have. And we should advertise it to our, our brothers. So when, whenever they come uh, to do uh, Hajj in Quds al Sharif, they should come in your places and uh, to build up our uh, Arnaut Mahalla or the uh, uh, Albanian uh, 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 district in, in, in Jerusalem. And of course, to have our flag there and to show to the world that Arnauts are here. And uh, we as Arnauts, we have a very uh, famous history and connection with uh, Palestine, apart from uh, Sheikh Ahmed Helmi Abdul Baki that you mentioned, who was the prime minister uh, in time of the Ottoman Empire. We were the defenders of, uh, of Palestine. There is a book called uh, Turkish Palestine by my friend Mehmet Tutunju, and there he shows uh, uh, the, even the uh, Albanians who were there in time of the Ottoman Empire. For example, uh, he have even uh, put in his book a flag of the uh, 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 division of Škodra. 
uh, Ishkodra, uh, Ishkodra uh, uh, division, who was sent, I think, in time of uh, Sultan Abdul Hamid, and was defending uh, Masjid uh, uh, Al Halil, the Ibrahim Mosque in 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 Al Halil in Hebron. So <clears throat> we were there, and uh, by the way, uh, the last uh, Ottoman <coughs> prefect of uh, of uh, Quds was Mehdi Frashri, who was also an Albanian. So we have so many connections. And uh, 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 I mean, while uh, Israel is trying to manipulate in the Balkans and trying to manipulate the Albanians and, and shows you uh, Arabs like you are late comers or this uh, war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu says that God gave us Palestine. It was not God. It was Britain and America. Uh, we, we, we should uh, show our own option of history. So uh, I will appeal to my Albanian friends uh, once we close the video, and I'll tell them, so when you go to Palestine, we have the Arnauts here, so they must come and do ziyaret. They must visit you and Welcome. even make do pray to you. And uh, 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 by the way, when I visited Quds al-Sharif, Sheikh Omar al-Kiswani told me, this is the gate to the heaven. So, I mean, because uh, our prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Isa alayhi salam, they went to, to the sky from there. So it is a very important place for us. Mr. Arnaut, uh, I was uh, very happy to have you in my show. Please forgive me and uh, for the Thank technical you. problems we had, but we'll have you again, inshallah. Thank yes. you very much, Thank indeed, and salam alaykum. Dear friend, uh, 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 Zotin Arnaut. For you, Sean, no cuptoni anglis geni di coche tu a perché? Co zote Abdul Rauf Arnauti na trivui po realitete e sheptar vena Palestin. Se si ambasade Kosovos de tiranas no 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 ke chan fare kogen po sheptar vena Palestinas. Po atajan me cindra tu me zote Abdul Rauf folle me de per puna ne hajit de zit ju e shedo shkoni ne Jerusalem. The Quds al Sharif for the Burhaz in her theater. Do it in contact only more than the two win Lydia Mezotin Abdul Rauf Arnautin. Then Jerusalem in Lintor Kutashoni, Totakoni Arnaut, Shiptar Tan, he came in Ten Babadem, the Palestinian Epustuan Israeli. The Parata Servil Israeli Cheton, Palestina, the Jerusalemi, he perket Israeli, the Tatin Chikan Blazer to your Shiptar. Që akoma rezistojnë dhe thonë që Jeruzalemi lindor është për ne, për Palestina. Në bisedën që pata me zotin Abdul Rauf Arnaut, a i nga tha disa fakte shumë interesante. Fakte që që nga krye ministri i pari i Palestinës që ka që në kohën kur Izraeli e pushtoj në dy stetetën dhe u bështet, ka që një shqiptar, pra në bajni mund, dhe thua e një atyre palikarve të që u lërasin për Izraelin në Tiran dhe në Prishtin, që kur Izraelitët e rëdhën nuk gjetën Araba të Krye Minister, po gjetën një Shqiptar, i cili ishte Ahmed Helmi Abdul Baki, që një nga hoxalarët e Gjanis Aksa ka qënë gjithashtu Shqiptar, emrin e kishte Mahmud El Arnauti, dhe që në vakëfin e Gjanis Shendë, kemi të varosur Ahmed Hilmi Abdulbakin, që është një shqiptar, Hajj Emin Al Husseinin dhe Sherif Husseinin. Pra duhet adini që kur të shkoni në Kudz, aty janë varet e shqiptarve tanë që kanë gushtuar për mbrojtje në Gjanisë të Shein. Ju falenderoj shumë gjithë, assalamu alikum, u rahmetullah. Assalamu alikum.